iMessage, and Windows? This is Mac Voices. Today's Mac Voices is supported by Collide. Collide ensures only secure devices can access your cloud apps. It's zero trust, tailor-made for Okta. Book a demo today at collide.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, it's Tuesday night. It is Mac Voices Live. We are live on YouTube at youtube.com slash TV. You should be live with us in the chat room. We would love to have you here. Um, we do this every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. So mark your calendars uh, for those two times or whatever time it is, wherever you are, and join us. Throw in, uh, we, we already have friends in the chat room. Uh, one friend is in Vegas getting ready to go to dinner, so he probably won't stay with us for the whole show, but that seems like a pretty good excuse as far as I'm concerned. Um, number of things to get to tonight. Um, things are a little bit different tonight, though. Um we decided to try an open mic night. So we invited any of our Patreon supporters who wanted to join in the fun and come on uh, to do so. And we've so far, we've had one taker. I don't know if we'll have anybody else. Uh, we'll get to him in a minute. But uh, this is what happens when you're a patron of Mac Voices. You, you never know what we're going to pull on you. So if you are a patron and you haven't signed into our Slack, drop me an email. You 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 definitely should have access. You will have access to our Slack as a patron, and then you can you could get the link to join. Anyway, this is not a commercial, so we're just going to move on. Um, so we'll go around the room, uh, introduce everyone. Oh yeah, we also have another new face too. So yeah, it's, it's a very very different kind of night. Um, so I'm going to start as I always do up in the corner of the angels with Mr. David Ginsburg. David, good to have you as always. Good to be here, Chuck. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, so good to see some new new faces here on the panel. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. We always do. We always do. For his first time joining the panel, uh, Mr. Ben Rathig is here. Um, and he even put a jacket on for the occasion. Wow. Yeah. Ben, Chuck, have I you. have to make this look good. You, you, you're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. I, I, you almost appear respectable. <laughs> you, know me, you know me too well to know that. Oh, I, did say I didn't know any better, Chuck. Why are you ruining the illusion? Well, I just said almost, almost. Mm. So, <laughs> um, joining us, one of our uh, Patreon supporters, Brian. Brian, welcome. It's good to have you. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate you having me, and so glad to be here. Uh, would you mind just introducing yourself a little bit, if you don't mind telling us what you do and what that, what that, why the heck would you be here with this bunch of misfits? Well, uh, yeah, I, I'm actually a, and I'm, I'm an educator. I teach uh, econ at a high school and uh, just have an affinity and love for technology and Apple computers. And um, I've been watching the show for several years and always enjoy the interaction, and jumping into the Slack and, and catching up there, too. So, yep. a little well, bit great. about me. Well, Where are you from, Brian? Uh, oh, yeah. Phoenix, Arizona. Not too far from me. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for your support. Thank you for being here. Um, you know, this is a very friendly group, as you well know from watching. So just dive right in when you have a thought. And if if they try to crowd you out, I'll make sure you get in. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Eric Bolden has joined us again with a big Wisconsin t-shirt on. Eric, good to see you. Hi, Chuck. Yeah, it's nice to be here. This is going to be a fun night. It's nice to have all the new faces. I'm looking forward yeah. to it. Yeah, you just never know who's going to show up. <laughs> Brittany Smith has joined us, although she's just a tad under the weather, but she decided she wanted to try it. So we said, absolutely, come on in. Britt, good to see you. Hi, I'll do my best not to cough in the mic. Thanks for having me. Hey, don't worry about it. Uh, I, as they say, I will do my best to fix it in post. <laughs> Last but absolutely not least, uh, at the bottom of my screen, Mr. Jim Ray. Jim, it's good to have you with a working headset and working mic, and everything's working tonight. I made it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just barely. I was, I, was, I was out and about and rushed home and popped on and got on at the last minute. Uh, good, good. Well, that's rather profound that you made it, but yes, that's is always good. It's always good. Um, 
I was wondering if Ben could introduce himself a little bit more. Oh, I'm I sorry. Don't. I keep I keep thinking Ben, you know, is so famous that everybody should know him. But Ben, please introduce. Well, I am a former associate editor uh, at Geekbeat TV, under the the artist formerly known as Kelly Lewis. Uh, I have been in tech for probably decades now. I uh, used to be on the uh, uh, frequent guest co-host on the Tua Talk cast. And oh. well, now I'm do now I am doing a lot of BTN these days. And if I remember cool. correctly, you have a, a temporary site set up for yourself. It's not a permanent, it's just something you're you're it's a temporary home. Yes, until I actually wanted to spend time and money on it. It's wraithigtech.blogspot.com. And what kind of things are you posting there, Ben? Uh, ge generally my own thoughts on Apple moves, tech moves, where rumors could go, that type of thing. Okay, good, good. Well, I'll make sure that I have that in your bio. And, uh, you know, everyone, please go check out Ben's thoughts. I think. <laughs> Nobody wants Ben's to see that. While. Yeah, I just, re I just realized what I was saying. It's like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's like saying, go see the guillotine. Well, well I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had uh, I, I had several articles that I seeded the group with uh, tonight. Um, the first one is um, from Apple Insider. It's by our friend um, Andrew Orr. And I'm quite not quite sure to what to make of this. Um, it, the, the title is, Microsoft is bringing iMessage to Windows with the phone link app. Apple has been under a lot of fire um, from all corners for not participating in some of the the standard, if you will, source uh, chat applications and background, sort of requiring iMessage and, and limiting iMessage to just work with itself. It's the old green, green bubble versus blue bubble debate that you've probably heard us talk about before. <clears throat> and I'm trying to decide if this is a crack in the wall of the other side. Um, now, it, and if, if you read the article, it's pretty clear that it's not going to be fully functional, but it does look like it will allow Windows users access to at least some iMessage capabilities. Anybody have any strong thought, thoughts, feelings, opinions? Is this a win for Apple? Or is it just, it doesn't it mean anything? Personally, I think it's one of those things that's probably not going to be around for all that long. I think it's pretty clear that Microsoft is using a bit of a hack here, and this is definitely not Apple-approved. Gosh, I, I wouldn't think Microsoft would do it if they weren't pretty confident about it. It's not like some startup in a garage. Do you have the link for this story, Chuck? I saw the. Oh yeah. Oh, here it is. Um, I found it. I found it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I threw it into uh, earlier, Jim. You just weren't here yet. Well, I no, I did see it earlier, and I, I saw several people reported on it. But I, you know, I've been kind of busy today, so I haven't really been to. You know, I thought it was kind of puzzling, and yeah, that's a. Won't be able to send photos or participate in group chats. So I only see it through phone link. So they must be hacking into the phone somehow. I don't know if they're necessarily hacking. Well, I mean, I okay. Think... Yeah, not hacking is probably the the wrong <laughs> word, but um that you know, they they must be accessing the messages through the phone. So Well, it, I mean, the 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 iMessage ecosystem is not completely closed. It's not like you can't send out to to uh, through through SMS. It's just that you can't. You don't have certain capabilities, and your bubble doesn't get tagged the the iMessage color. Okay, so, but apparently it's saying it's being done through Bluetooth. So they're they're not talking to Apple's iMessage system, but. 
apparently Apple must have built something into the phone where some features of messages are available through Bluetooth. Um, maybe, maybe the watch uses that or um, not sure why that Apple would have that, but there must be something that Apple has built in that app Microsoft has taken advantage of. I'm guessing it's something with the notification system, since I believe that's how they would get uh, app, uh, Apple notifications to third-party watches in the past. Mm. David? Yeah, I mean, I think just like anything, I mean, Apple is really trying to expand their horizons in the, the Windows world. I mean, I, don't know, I can't believe we're saying this, but uh, that the, the fact that... Uh, you're going to have this app in there and eventually they've already started expanding apple music and that that's going to be in there and then because i started exploring some of the betas that are in the, on some apple uh, for the photos and then uh, a number of other apps that you go in the, the, the microsoft store they're, they're in beta right now they're being tested so i think this is just kind of a an addition to type of, of product that they're going to be adding uh for uh, for, from Apple, um, I was gonna. I was just gonna paste. There's a. There's an actual specific support article rel- relates to this from window from Microsoft that I just put in our Zoom chat um, that uh, talks about it even more deeper. You do have to be a Windows Insider in order to be able to access this right now. So it's not like you can just uh, add it right off this bat here. Uh, so that what, when, if anyone is not familiar with that, the Windows Insider is just basically their beta. Uh, and really, you 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 were really treading water if you were going to put beta software, on, especially in Microsoft Windows, uh, going in the Insider program. Um, but you know, I've got I've got extra machines I've played with in the past with this and the stuff you want to play with. Yeah, go for it. And then um, I've done it in the virtualization. You know, I can virtualize you know using like Parallels, something like Parallels on, on a Mac. That you know, they could allow you to be able to uh, to explore this too. So. Um, I mean, Microsoft exp- they're, they're they're expanding big time. I mean, Windows 11 is 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 huge now, in, in as far as what they're doing with w- Windows and and the programs that they keep continue to excel. And I'm starting to work on, I'm starting to work with it to work more. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's definitely you can't ignore it anymore. Windows 10 will be gone in another another year and a half, two years. So they they really have to uh, advance the technology. So they're still going to continue to do Windows, it seems. Uh, but this is just another step in the direction for the, especially on the for the on the consumer side, it's consumer side of things. Uh, those there's still people who have iPhones who don't want to use a Mac; they want to use a PC, and that's fine. And this is just another way of expanding it. And I think eventually, I, I bet Apple's going to open up uh, open up some more that that you can actually be in, on the actual iMessage system. I didn't read through this 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 tech article from from Microsoft yet uh, real thoroughly, but uh, I would not be all surprised. I just read it. I I don't I don't think so. It, it seems like this is something that somebody at Microsoft noticed. Hey, there's a Bluetooth API. Maybe this is used for like cars. This sounds like the same way that a car would connect to an iPhone, so that a car system could make phone calls. And apparently, there must be a text message API as part of that also. Although that seems rather odd for a car, you wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Um, although maybe if you had a car with, maybe this is intended, like some cars might have speech. So a text message could come in and the car could speak it and you could, I, that's the only thing I can think of, but, um, you know, there's absolutely no mention here of Apple being involved in this in any way. Um, there's certainly, you know, no mention of access to the iMessage, you know, API network APIs, um, you know, which would be required if it was going to directly hook without the phone. Um, I I think this is just sort of, uh, you know, like I say, somebody at Microsoft, it's almost to me, it seems like, wow, this is a weird thing for Microsoft to do. It's, it's like they're just sort of grabbing for crumbs that Apple is leaving around. It almost yeah. feels like it's. I just went in to look at the actual. Uh, the, this is the community. They're listing some of the known issues: not supporting replying to group messages or sending or receiving media and messages. It won't receive the first message and any recipient messages, and it's not supporting emojis and gifs and images. So it's it's very very beta. <laughs> That's for sure. I, I don't think it's beta. I think it's just there's a Bluetooth API, 
and they're that you know so they can only support what apple has supported through bluetooth and yeah. it seems very natural that apple wouldn't support all of those things through bluetooth that that list sounds exactly like what you would expect because bluetooth is a low bandwidth you know low amount of data uh you know protocol Mac Voices is supported by Collide at collide.com slash Mac Voices. Clicking on the wrong link can cause you plenty of headaches if it's just you. But if it's your company, the possibility of clicking a wrong link is multiplied by the number of users right along with the headaches. Your users don't mean to create a problem, but they have other things on their priority list. That's why Collide works so well for Okta users. You can get your entire fleet to 100% compliance. If a device isn't compliant and tries to log in, it can't. The user is provided with the information on what needs to be done. If they do it, great. If not, they're blocked. Immediate, helpful device compliance that secures your company. Without Collide, there's nothing to stop an unsecure device. With Collide, unsecure devices don't have a chance to cause issues. And this is all built to work seamlessly with Okta. Zero trust architecture and 100% device compliance. That means fewer support tickets and less frustration all around. Just what the doctor ordered. Visit collide.com slash macvoices to learn more or book a demo. That's collide, K-O-L-I-D-E dot com slash macvoices. Collide.com slash macvoices. Thanks to Collide for supporting Mac Voices. Well, what, what you said about um, uh, an API that... For that something could read messages. I mean that you can do that in CarPlay. Now I know it's iMessage. I know it's, I know that's all within the Apple ecosystem. But you know there you have that ability right now with CarPlay to read your your text messages. Brian, you put something in our chat. I want I want you to bring up because I, I completely missed that. Yeah, I, I was just looking at the article and at, towards the bottom it has a few comments that people made and. Somebody had mentioned, you know, does the phone need to be nearby? And uh, I think as David had pointed out too, because it's sent through Bluetooth, uh, yeah, it does have to be really close. Right. Well, this, this yeah. to me sounds like the analog to, I can send and receive SMS messages on my Mac, but only if my iPhone is close. Um, and I believe that's also done through Bluetooth. So it sounds like it's basically doing the same thing in reverse to what Apple does, but the, you know, the only issue is that SMS is a pretty limited um, facility to start with. Um, and so there, you're not really losing anything by doing that. But uh, for this, that Microsoft's trying to do the reverse. But, and also the other thing is when Apple's doing that with SMS, uh, I think that only works with iPhones. You can't do that with an Android phone close by if I'm not, Am I right about that? Anybody know? I believe so. So there's a case where Apple's, you know, controlling both ends. And, you know, so they can alter the protocol that they're using to communicate between the phone and the computer because they 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 control the, the, the network at both ends. But Microsoft doesn't have that luxury. They're they're just only able to do whatever Apple happened to have put in there. And Apple almost certainly didn't put it in there for this kind of thing you know i'm thinking you know like there's still older cars that don't support carplay that you know can hook up to do phone calls and i'm guessing that that's what this you know what apple intended this for jim the only thing this just seems so i mean the way you all are describing it um on the back end it seems so jury rigged that this seems like something really weird that that microsoft would ever let get out and I'm not suggesting that Apple is cooperating, I agree with that. but it, I mean, it, it almost like just seems like, okay, we'll just slap this together and see if we can make it work. But to even have this, even with the, what is it, David, the Windows Insider? Yeah, it has to be a Windows, the Microsoft Windows Insider, which is basically their beta. Yeah. yeah I, mean, well, I don't, th I think that's just because it's, you know, that will probably pass. And at some point, you know, in a, in a couple of months or whatever, that will no longer be necessary. I mean, you know, that's well, true no, for anything. It'll move out of there. It'll move yeah. out of there at some point. But yeah. right now, it's you have to be an, um, a Windows Insider to, to access it. It's it's at the very beginning stages uh, of, of development. Yeah. 
Well, I don't know if it means that. And, you know, my guess is that whatever this protocol is, it's probably been there for 10 years and probably hasn't changed. I mean, phones have been able to hook to cars for a long, long time. So that may be why Microsoft is confident enough to use this because they may figure, you know, this has been here for 10 years. It's used by other, you know, equipment other than what we're using it for. So Apple can't really screw with us and, you know, like remove it. Um, so it is. it does sound kind of jury rigged, but I'll bet, you know, you know, to me, it just sort of like emphasizes, you know, if I was a Windows customer, I'd look at this and go, damn, I should just buy a Mac and do this right. <laughs> ben, you were shaking your head almost hard enough to break your neck. Um, what part did you agree with or not agree with there? Uh, pretty much all of it. It's, I mean, it just sounds like, it, yeah, it's jury rigged. Uh, I mean, they tried something. It just so happened to work. Uh, so they put it into their insider preview builds uh, just to see that A, whether they it would be something useful to customers, and B, whether Apple would give them a nice message about it. Well, the other thing too that I think thought was so strange about this is, and I've I, I know I use messaging a lot on my Mac. I'm sure there are plenty of people that do on Windows, but really, the messaging seems to be, I think, largely a mobile thing. A lot more, and so if this was on Android, I'd say, okay, this is ex- this is exciting. This, but the fact that it's on Windows just makes it all that much the weirder. I, Not- I use messaging on my computer all the time. Um, if I'm in front of my computer, I'm I'm not going to pick up my phone and use that tiny little keyboard. I've got a, a perfect. Touch, I'm a touch typist, um, and sometimes. You know, I might get a message in, and if I'm at home and it looks like, oh, you know, this is something that I want to write a paragraph, I will walk over to the computer because I can touch type it and rather than trying to thumb type it. So I, I, I don't agree with that. I mean, I want a message on whatever the device is, you know, and I'll do the same thing with, you know, Slack or social media or whatever. You know, if I want to do something long, I'll go to the computer and do it. So, you know, I if I was on Windows and had a phone, I would definitely like, yeah, I'll take it. I mean, I'd rather have a full-fledged, uh, you know, messaging support. But, you know, Apple's not going to give us that. But, you know, Mike found some, sit down something. And, you know, I think I, you know, also said jury rigged. And, you know, but I, I don't think that this was something that was like so that experimental. I'm sure this protocol is documented. You know, like I say, it's probably used for, you know, in, in fact, it may be some sort of standard um, that's not even Apple's. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think it's like somebody just was like, you know, experimenting. Somebody was probably looking at a standards doc and said, hey, we can use this for something. I, I think that, you know, but, you know, you don't usually see Fortune 500 or Fortune 5 companies doing that sort of thing though that's what it's kind of weird about it you know taking something and repurposing it for something else that's the kind of thing that you expect to see somebody in their garage do um <laughs> so um it's interesting you know I, in some ways it's kind of cool to see you know microsoft acting more like a scrappy but you know it, it's certainly not something microsoft would have done in the past microsoft was you know we embrace and extend you know we control everything and here microsoft is like oh you know okay apple's not gonna you know give us what we'd really like but you know hey we we can sneak in the back door and my gosh we're gonna do it you know wow interesting and uh, i think that's the other part of it microsoft has had such a dominant position in pcs however in phones and tablets They've been all but cut out. Windows Phone was a failure. They can. It was a mic- failure because they wouldn't embrace it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, the, they have an ability to basically Microsoftize my, the Android platforms because of how open they are. They don't have that option on Apple platforms. 
And since Apple has such a high market share in both phones and tablets, uh, if they you have someone who has an iPhone or an iPad and a Microsoft or in a Windows laptop or desktop, they kind of want some of that same connectedness you can get with other platforms. They just have right. very limited options to get it when dealing with Apple. And that's what I why I brought up the fact that Apple's beta testing Apple Music or their beta testing Apple TV app on both ends is the fact that they want to get on the platform. They want they want they want to have their their customers who have iPhones be able to utilize the same type of services they can have on on um, on Windows. The other thing is iTunes is still available on Windows and it's god awful horrible. I mean it, it it has to be replaced. And I think that's what Apple's trying to do is. Do like they did on the Mac. They got rid of iTunes, put it in Apple Music, so you can support your library the same way you do you did in iTunes. Um, so you know, I think that's going to save them some, some grief as far as having to support that that iTunes application going further. So they're they're pushing along with it. I mean, our I put in our chat to talk about it. That was back in January. So um, it's still very beta. I've tried it, and it, uh, I can't even install it on my my uh, my. Uh, M1 version of Windows on here because it doesn't support the that the AMD the the actual 64-bit processing of of the uh, of the M1 uh, silicon. So, uh, so it's only really on the Intel side of things right now. So they still got some work to do because well, one of that, why would Apple? If, 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 if you can do if you can do you can do it in virtual, it, you know, it's people who sometimes have to do that. But yeah, you're right because. Windows is still going to be an Intel-based uh, environment, so they're not going to really be too overly concerned about that. So, but they do—they are releasing the uh, uh, that, that version of Windows too. So, the discussion of iMessage and Windows continues in the next edition of Mac Voices as the panel tries to figure out the what's, hows, and whys. Then we touch on some things that Windows is trying to do to also attract Apple users. We touch on Spotify's lack of lossless music and chat GPT, and a whole lot more. That's next time on Mac Voices. I'll see you then. I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, Consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com